competence of being a general executor. Two, when you are doing administrative procedure and documents, please, let's get over some of these obvious and silly mistakes that people are making in submitting public documents or taking private documents and trying to make them public documents. That material will be there, available on those sites, so you can follow that to help you. Now, I said to you I'd share some new information. I want to talk to you about this concept of sockage or tenancy in common. Now, I bring this up because this is an example of the kind of deception that we are dealing with, particularly when we're dealing with land in their system. Now, if you go and have a look at positive law, you will see a section there that talks about common law and a section that talks about Anglo-Saxon law. And I'll give you the specific uh, examples of that. I'm referring to Article 256 of positive law and Article 259, common law and in fact 258 of feudal law. What we show is that the original concept of the tenant, the tenere, was introduced in Anglo-Saxon law under the Pippins, under the Carolingians in France, then known as the, uh, the Franks. And as a system, it was a system that had built in elements of fairness, the right of redemption, the right of equity. These rights were built in and honoured and the tenant was protected by the law. We also explain in the history there that under feudal law, they took those rights away. They enclosed those rights and denied those rights to a new underclass called the serf. Worse than a slave a creature, a creature born on the land and hence now today is still considered under their system a fixture of the land. Now one of the tricks they do to us, and I know that this was a great shock to many people, when they did pull out their mortgage documents, their, their land title documents, to find that the words on that title is not owner, but tenant or more particularly, tenant in common. That all the promises are made to us, all the claims are made to us that you own your home in the Roman system, you can never own your home. They never give you that right. You are at best a tenant, whether you're paying a mortgage or not. Well, I have some bad news. And the news is a realisation of what sockage is. And sockage appears when one starts to look at the handling of probate, which is the proof of the estate where some of the more technical nature of their system begins to reveal itself. Now, under their system, sockage and the concept of uh, soak man is claimed to have come from Anglo-Saxon law. They say it comes from Anglo-Saxon law. And what they say is that it was a position uh, between uh, free tenants uh, and bonded tenants, who they call villains, in which we get the word villain. And they claim that, that these roles had certain personal freedoms, but also performed many of the services on the land. And the soakmen uh, effectively belonged within the Lord's soak, or jurisdiction. So this is where they say, and they say that sockage as a form of tenancy is really derived from this relationship between one with the local lord and the local land, or if you want to use now the modern system with the council and the aldermen or eldermen and the local ratepayer. Well, let's look at this, because if that's true, then what they're claiming is that whilst they took tenancy away and they enclosed that right to their own elite, 
who became tenants to the monarch, Lord such and such, Earl such and such, Duke such and such became tenants to the monarch, what they're effectively saying is that in common law, the right of tenancy was returned. Is that true? Well, you go and have a look for the meaning of soak in Latin, or you have a look at the word of soak in French, from which they claim it, and the word soak means plowshare. But nothing to do with what they're claiming. Instead, we see an artful redirection. And the word sockage and soak, in fact, comes from two variations of Latin words. So cause, S-O-C-O-R-S, meaning weak-minded, stupid, negligent, slothful, careless, feeble, so cause, and so cur, meaning father-in-law, father, and in fact mother-in-law, so parents patriarch. So the relationship here is between the so cur and the so cor, between the guardian and the stupid, weak-minded, negligent, slothful, careless, feeble. Under that arrangement, Sockage is a ward tenant. Sockage means you have absolutely no rights. You are there at the whim of the guardians, and if they wish to take your property, they will and they do. They never returned tenancy. When you see tenancy on your land title, you see tenant in common, you are not a true tenant in the original legal sense. You're a ward tenant. You're a tenant so core. They insult us. They curse us. They laugh at us. And that's why there is no right of redemption. And that's why there's no right of equity, which is why I need to update the material because I am in error. I felt and believed that they had returned in some resemblance the nature of tenancy. They did not. The right of redemption and the right of equity, the right to fix their mistakes and keep on ploughing on, to blow billions of dollars and keep on going, to avoid jail, to never be held account. You know where I'm heading? That's right. These aren't our rights. These are the rights of the banking families, the industrial families, the parasite families. And we do not have that right at all. And that's why they keep getting let off, because they have the right of redemption. Mia culpa. I made a mistake. Let me fix it up. I'm sorry. Well, if they're a tenant, a true tenant, they have that right. We, on the other hand, are ward tenants. So I wanted to share that with you. Now, that is going to be a significant change in our attitude towards foreclosures, in the future. I gave an example in Roman administrative procedure in terms of the argument of debt, but in terms of the aspect of tenancy and the aspect of land, it puts a whole different complexion on it. Because it means that there is no law that we can argue if effectively the tenancy is one based on you being weak minded, stupid, negligent, slothful, careless. Instead, we must move to the reality that your land has been properly enclosed, properly circumscribed, properly surveyed and uh, registered and that we challenge that land title. Now in the time available, let me cover some of these other areas and, and now that I'm talking about land title and registration, let me bring up the speed with what I've been doing and what we've been doing in terms of the websites. A number of you have been asking and has been a, a, a urgent issue. It's been an important issue for some time now. 
where is our public record? Where is our public notice? And in public notice, uh, in their system, and they trick us, public notice ultimately is their gazette system. If a newspaper is not a gazette, then it is not public notice. Public notice is the international network of gazettes, a gazette being a coin of currency of Venice, ancient Venice. And where's our great register? Well, the good news is the workbenches are coming along fine. We're updating the functionality and we're in a position where those functions will be turned on in a matter of days. But like all of these things, it's taken a long time to get the structure in place. And I look forward and I hope I'll be in a position from next week to say to all of you, those features and functions are now available and we are now able to reflect our own procedures, our own actions on the public record, on public notice. Now let me give a little bit of depth to that so we understand the significance of it. When instruments are created on our system, you'll be asked to enter a record to create the actual record that will become part of either the public notice and the public register. And when you do that, it will be the categorization of it. You will then, if it's valid, if you, what you've done is valid, you'll receive a number. That number then needs to be incorporated into the instrument because that number is the effective title. It is the number that recognises this document is now part of the public register. And depending upon the nature of the document, it will be published potentially on not just one website, but on the 60 plus websites of the Eucadia network. So in terms of public notice, in terms of international exposure, it will be a formidable system, which is again why it's taken some time to get prepared. I look forward to this. There are rules in terms of how to have things recorded properly. If you don't follow those rules, if you don't record properly, then it will not be registered. It's the same as their system. But no longer will you be denied through the trickery of the Roman system into ensuring things are properly recorded on the public record. I look forward to sharing that with you. Now in the few minutes left before we answer the questions, let me just cover this issue of spirit and earth change because I know that this continues to be a concern to everyone. And I did say that we'd cover this. I'll cover this in the last few minutes before I look forward to speaking with you and, and answering your questions. The question I keep getting asked is one that I would actually like to know the answer of too, and that is, will everything be okay? Or will, as some claim, the world be coming to some grinding halt? One thing I do know, and one thing I will share with you, is one answer, and that is, if the future of the world depended solely on those living getting their act together, then we're already doomed. I'm sorry. <laughs> if, if we're relying purely on the living without considering the substantial numbers of spiritual energy, including the sun and, other, and the earth and other spiritual dimensions, then we, we're doomed. Because what I see in the human dimension is one third of the world want the world to end, one third of the world vehemently don't want the world to end but think they are responsible to saving the world and a third don't care or don't know. Now whilst there is an awakening, it is certainly happening far slower. I asked you all please go and have a look and go and read the covenant of one heaven with fresh eyes from the beginning, from the exordium. 